So the question I get asked a lot is how I transfer my image onto my watercolor paper. Hey everyone, Debbie here with Watercolors That Glow and in this tutorial I am going to be showing you how I use a digital projector to transfer my image onto my watercolor paper. So this is the digital projector that I use to transfer my images to my watercolor paper. I've been using this one from Artograph, um, I think for about 11 years now, and it's a little bit bigger and heftier than the newer projectors, but it works great, and I don't want to get a new one until this one is completely just kaput. So um, it may not have all the features that a lot of the newer projectors have, but one thing I like about it is it gives me a really sharp and really bright image to project onto my paper, so I really like that. Here's a couple of newer projectors. These are also from Artograph. Um, you can tell that they've gotten much lighter and the lumens are better than the older style projectors. But you don't have to spend a lot of money on a projector. The one that I use, it was pretty expensive. I think it was around six or seven hundred dollars. The newer projectors that you can find, you can get them anywhere from about $90 all the way up to five and $600. And the only difference between all of them is the amount of lumens that project onto your table or your wall to give you um, a brighter picture. So some of the advantages of digital projectors are that, number one, you don't have to mess around with tracing paper or carbon paper or trying to lay down a grid on your watercolor paper. Um, it stops you from making a lot of mistakes and erasing because that's definitely something you don't want to do on your watercolor paper is erase. It can leave a mark and then when you go to uh, do a wash and then you put color into it, sometimes you can see those smudges where you've kind of marred the paper from erasing. So uh, digital projectors save you from a lot of that. And they have a lot of features too. Um, they have focus rings on all of them. Um, you can trace out your drawing in the daytime. Sometimes you don't always get as clear of detail as if you were to wait till the evening, but if you close your windows, your blinds, curtains, you can usually get enough detail to see what you're doing and, and get your drawing onto your paper. Um, another thing that's really nifty about them is that you they have all different kinds of connections, different ports, so you could use, um, what I use a lot is my, um, my USB drive. I just pop my pictures on there and then I just stick it right in the back and then you can go through the menus and find your picture and then project it onto your paper. You also have ports where you can put SD cards if you are taking your picture right from your camera and you don't really feel like you need to do any editing. You can just stick it right into the projector and some of them, like Artograph, actually have grids in them, so you can project a grid on a wall if you were doing a mural, although I really don't see what the point is. I've honestly never used that part uh, of the projector. But regardless, there's lots of different ways that you can hook up to get your image on to your projector. So there are many different ways that you can get your image from the projector onto your paper. You can use just a table and set your projector down and just project it onto a wall and then tape your paper to the wall and draw that way. But that is really uncomfortable and your arm can really get sore, especially if like me, it takes you a few hours to get your image onto your paper. So, uh, you can use a stand and Artograph actually makes some pretty cool stands for your projector. This is one of their original stands and it's a C-clamp so you would actually hook it to the side of your table and I used this one for years 
but now I use a tabletop stamp from Artograph, and it has a pretty sturdy base, um, and it won't come o come or get knocked over, so it's pretty sturdy. And one thing that's really cool about the stands, and I'll drop this down a little bit so that you can see it, but they have these rings, and you can adjust the height, so you can adjust it there, and then the same thing here, and then you just tighten the, the rings. And you can actually get this all the way up to about 49 inches um, from your tabletop if you're doing a very large image that you want to transfer. And so it also has this little uh, knob here, and it's a 360 degrees. So what you do is you just attach it to the little screw there, and then you set it up however you want it. And once you get it where you want it, then you can just tighten it down, and then go ahead and you can project onto your image. One thing that's kind of nice, if it's really tall, is that almost all digital projectors come with a remote control, so you can um, control everything if you've got it way up high and you need to change things or change the position of the image on your paper, you can use a remote control. So I really like that feature about them. So what you do if you want to project it onto a table, and this is a really cool feature, and the newer projectors do this automatically. Mine doesn't because, like I said, it's about 11 years old. But what it will do is you kind of basically get it as straight as you can with a little bit of an angle because you don't want your image uh, hitting the feet of your projector stand. So then what you do is they have something called uh, keystoning. And then you adjust the keystoning, and that straightens out the picture and stops it from looking trapezoidal. So that's a really nice feature. And like I said, on the newer models that are much cheaper, uh, most of the time the keystoning is automatic. So uh, let's see, one other type of stand. This is a little baby stand from Artograph. It was pretty cheap. Um, I like it because if you... Uh, don't want to set it right on the table if you want a, some air circulating because projectors can get a little warm. Then they have these neat little tabletop stands and same thing. You can just hook it right to the little stand. If I can actually get it hooked up. There we go. And then you just tighten it down and same thing. You just aim it wherever you want it, if you want it on a wall, say you're doing a mural, or you want to aim it onto a canvas, you can do it that way. Like say you have a canvas set up on an easel, that's really good for these little stands. And then you can also turn it around behind your image and have the image reverse, and you can actually, the light is shiny enough that you can have it come right through the back of, say, a canvas, um, if you've got it on an easel. So that, that's a really handy um, feature to have. One thing I like about some of the newer projectors is that they have a battery. So if you have it way up in the air and you don't want to use your power cord, um, most of the time they give you a couple of hours of battery time to draw from. I usually like to keep mine plugged in, it, uh, especially on the older models, is the light is just a whole lot brighter. Sometimes on some of the newer models, the light isn't as bright because you're, you're kind of in an eco mode um, with the battery pack. Although I have mentioned this uh, previously, one really nice thing about digital projectors is that you can actually project the image during the day. And in the little inset in the video, you can see how it projects and how bright the image is. And that's, that's really great if you don't have to wait till, um, or if you don't want to wait till the evening. Although I do find that I prefer to transfer my image during the evening. I just seem to see a lot, uh, 
lot crisper details. So that, you know, it just depends all on how detailed um, you want your image to be. And so again, that's a really important fe feature. I also want to add that don't ever let anybody tell you that using a projector is somehow cheating. It absolutely isn't. In the late 15th century, there were quite a few artists that started learning about like the camera obscura, lucida. So they actually used optics to be able to get their images transferred onto their canvas or a wall. So this method, maybe not with the digital projector, but artists using some sort of procedure to transfer their image um, to what have you, like I said, a wall, a canvas or paper, that's been going on for hundreds of years. So it's not cheating, just throw that idea right into the trash bin. It's a perfectly acceptable way of transferring your image. In fact, quite a few famous artists use this method, especially watercolor artists, so don't let that discourage you. And don't let those more expensive units put you off too. If you want a unit that's still gonna do a great job, again, some of these newer units that run about $100, they do a great job. Um, I've seen paintings and drawings from them and most artists have told me that they uh, have a very, very clear image. So at the end of this video, underneath of it, you're gonna see a couple of links to where you can find these autograph stands. Um, and there are other types of stands out there. You just gotta kind of really look to find one. Um, I've seen people actually just kind of cobble together from what they have, um, you know, to project onto their tables or on, onto the wall. And I also might add, you can actually even use a tripod. You just do the same thing. If you're gonna use a tripod, you know, and you want it to project onto your table, you may have to put it onto another table or if you have a big enough table, move it off to the side, do the same thing, angle your digital projector, and then um, if you have an older model, um, you might have to manually keystone it. If you have a newer projector, or if you do get a newer projector, it will automatically keystone it for you. So there you have it. There's everything you need to know about getting a digital projector. And if you need to, shoot me a question on my email or on the Facebook group or right through my learning website.